Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. Uh, on your screen you will see uh, another one of my doodles and uh, it's a series of these modified X shapes and these oval shapes. Um, I came up with this because I had a lot of leftover acetate uh, and and these uh, plastic stencils and I thought I'd make use of them um, here I have some more um, as you can see they're not the cleanest but this was the best I could do because uh, I find that after repeated scrubbings the paint tends to stick even more but it doesn't affect the performance of the uh, plastic. So, um, so anyway, I'm going to use this as a rough guide for the layout. And uh, there will be some variation, some changes, but that happens when you uh, go along with the process. So anyways, um, going to start by taking these guys off and I will proceed with inking the plate with some colors that I had picked. Just making sure that I've removed all of it. And by the way, I uh, had just cleaned this very well with some soapy water and a rag. Uh, these are the colors that I'm going to use. These are my Amsterdam paints. Um, this is a ultramarine violet, a brilliant blue, and a cobalt blue. So this will be the darker first layer. And I'll proceed to lay these out. Have, I'm going to have some different zones of color. I'm glad that the brayers are behaving today. I haven't uh, applied any baby oil to them, but they seem to be very quiet, and that's a good thing. So I'm starting with a fairly dark first layer. And uh, this time I'm not paying too much attention to the divisions. Uh, in fact, I'm kind of blending the different zones together. So I will get a more painterly background. Okay. Then I'm going to apply some some scribble marks here. And since the theme is X's and ovals,
my marks are kind of like following the same subject matter. So again, um, I'm using my favorite type of paper, which is Somerset. Uh, for those who are just tuning in, this is Somerset English paper. Uh, I get this from dickblick.com. It's available from other vendors, but I will put the details and the source uh, links in the description box below. Uh, because one of the most frequent questions I get is, what kind of paper do you use and what size is it? Now, I, I think that paper choice is a very personal thing. Um, what I find that works for me may not work for you. So I encourage you to go to your favorite art supply store and look at the samples and do some experimenting. Okay, let's see what we got here. Got a nice transfer here. Very intense blue color. So I'm going to air dry this. I'm going to see if I can salvage this. Um, I will be using this artist law. This is called unbleached titanium No, I don't know if this shows up on camera because it's fairly subtle. The paint on the under layer is beginning to reactivate. So you will see like the uh, ghost image of it. It means that what I'm applying on top of the paint is reactivating the bottom layer. So the chances of this transferring are much better. I'm going to do my scribbles.
I also get this question asked a lot from many viewers um, about leaving the paper on um, when to decide the right time to pull the paper off. Now, uh, the general rule is when I'm making a first pull with just a plain background, I don't see that it's necessary to leave the paper for more than five minutes. But in this case, what I'm trying to do is pull a ghost print. I leave it, I would say about 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes 20, but not much longer than that because there's a danger of it drying too much and then st starting to tear the paper. So uh, it's a question of doing some uh, experiments and finding out the best time to pull the paper off. Okay. Let's see what we got here. I think I have a very nice transfer. It's a highly textured. It's very different from the first one. So every print is a surprise. Here is a wide shot. It's this very interesting, delicate textures. So that's it for the second pool. I am going to air dry these two guys and I'll be right back. Now I'm going to try to recover this and see if it's going to work on the first pool because this is a dark background and then maybe these uh, lighter textures will add some interest. I figure, you know, the residue or the ghost print is still wet. Now, if I had walked away and let this dry, on the plate, I don't think it would transfer as well. But I'm going to give it a try and see. Because uh, on these type of images, the more texture and um, effects that you add, the more interesting it is to look at. really pressing hard because I want to make sure that I pick up what's left over and then when I pick up most of it then I know that it's time to clean the plate off okay
not a whole lot, but it gives like some subtle texturing. Okay, I tried. It's a very little, kind of like little blotches. So uh, I'm going to air dry this and I'm going to clean this off because it's not transferring anymore. So this is how I do a quick cleanup. This is a solution of soapy water and some detergent. And as you can see, the leftover comes right off very easily. I'm not even putting too much pressure on my sponge. And uh, it cleans right away. Then I finish off with a wet rag. Well, not wet, but moist rag. I've squeezed the uh, most of the water out. And it's a good chance to clean the printing table as well. Okay, so I'm back after a short break and I'm going to refer to this diagram and we have these large modified X shapes. This is cadmium red. This is apricot by Lucas. So I'm going to have some different zones of light and dark. This is also by Lucas. This is Arctic.
So I am aiming for a painterly effect. I'm mixing very unlikely combinations of light blue and apricot color and red. Okay, I just made sure my hands are clean. This is the first pool with the blue and purple. Pretty cool. So here's the second layer. And I love those flame-like uh, effect of the uh, cadmium red. So while this is still wet, See if I can capture that on this. I got some of it, well actually most of it, there's a little misregistering there but that's okay, 
Um, so this is going to be air dried and then I will move on to the next step. Okay, back from a short break. I'm going to try this Amsterdam copper. It's becoming one of my favorite colors because it's so rich and intense. And then some Naples yellow. And Naptol Red Light. So it's a mix of all these warm colors. Now hopefully these will pull off.
Okay, to refresh your memory, here is the print with the second pull. overlap of stencils it's becoming a more and more complex image pretty cool huh now while this is wet I'll see if I can capture this with this I'm going to try leaving this a little bit longer, say 10 to 15 minutes, and it will give me a chance to rinse off my brayer. So I'll be right back. Okay, right back. Let me see what we got. I like that. Totally changes the character of the print. It's very highly textured. And a totally different uh, feeling from the first one. So I'm going to go ahead, air dry this, and then recap okay back after a short break and this has dried very nicely uh, I thought it's time for a little collage and I found these warm-up scraps and I thought they would look good here. Like so.
Okay. I think that does it for this ghost print. Here's a close up of the details. Has some very nice texturing. All right, so that's the ghost print with some collage. Now, here is the first print. Which I think is a standalone. Uh, I think it has enough going on that it doesn't need any collage. Here's a detailed shot. There's just a little bit of metallic copper that shows through. Gives it a little shine. And I do like the interaction of the orange and copper with the phthalo blue. I think it's a very interesting contrast and combination. So anyways, uh, I hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up and share with your friends. I appreciate your viewership and uh, I wish to thank all my wonderful subscribers and helping me uh, to keep this channel going. So thank you again and I hope to see you next time.